It's number 34? All right. So the idea is this. We're driving along. <laughs> Did I write it wrong again? <laughs> All right. Aye. Three dash three four. All right. The idea is this. We're driving along in our moon buggy. All right. We got the top down our convertible. All right. We're driving. We're driving. There's our scarf. All right. So we are. All right. We're driving along like this. We got some speed. The idea is this. We now never, never remember distracted driving. Please do not text or throw tomatoes while you're driving. Only have your passengers do it. All right, so now as this car rolls along like this, the idea is this, that the tomato is just going to do like this, right? I don't know if this will work. It won't work. The, the idea is that the tomato goes up, and when you throw the tomato up, it's got, a, it's got a velocity upward, right, whatever your V naught Y is, but it also still has the same speed as the car, right? In other words, it's already got a forward horizontal speed because it's in the car. So the idea is that the tomato goes like this as the car drives underneath it and then you catch it okay that's a really short car all right so here's this car and then here's the same car later right here there's the car later okay so it goes up, it's got a horizontal velocity, but the vertical velocity is the top out, so you get it. So in other words, what kind of problem is this? If you really look at ignore the car, let's start, let's take this to be our initial horizontal position. What's our final horizontal position? Same thing. So what does that mean our delta y is? Zero. So what kind of problem is it? It's a full parabola problem. Okay? So we know what the forward velocity of the car is. What was it? Anybody? 25 meters per second. 25 meters per second. Is that a reasonable speed? It is highway speed limit. It's almost 55 miles an hour. All right, so what was our V naught Y? Did we say? Or did we just say how long it takes while it's in the air? 11 meters per second. All right, so this is 11 meters per second. By the way, could we figure out what the uh, magnitude and direction of our initial velocity were yeah we would we could do that but we'd have to uh, we'd have to use the trig okay inverse tangent which we'll do later all right so the idea is how long is it going to be in the air and how far is it going to go while it's in the air for that long cool so let's check it out we will draw our table we know that uh, we don't even need to know the, the angle do we because we don't got to break the initial velocity down into x and y components because they're given to us already. But we, we could still make our table, x and y, all right? So our v naught is, we already have 25 meters per second in the x direction and 11 meters per second in the y direction. Acceleration in the x direction, zero. Acceleration in the y direction, negative g. Is this for the car or the tomato? the tomato because the car doesn't move in the y direction all right but its acceleration does it say the car moves at a constant rate i hope it does because it needs to be we don't yes true we don't know the path that, we don't know what the path of the car is all right so um what about time ah that's what we don't know anything else we do know uh we have v naught y v y we have Ooh, time. So we're going to have to solve. What else we got? Delta. Delta. All right. And then what's our bridge? Times the bridge goes one side to the other. We don't know what x, we don't know what delta y is, and we don't care what delta y is, do we? Ah, oh, you're right. It's zero. And what is it for x? That's what we're... That's what we're trying to find out. All right. So now we're going to use which one to figure out time? I'll give you a hint. It's the one with three things in it. It's what we talked about before. We use these three things to solve for time, and then we take time and put it over here in our x direction thing. All right? So delta y 
is equal to V naught Y T minus one half G T squared. This is zero. And we do that thing where we cancel out and we end up knowing that time is equal to two V naught Y over G, right? We just, I, I did all the simplification at once. Okay. All right. So that means that all we got to do now is say that Delta X is equal to VX T plus one half AX T squared, which of course is settle. All right. So Delta X is equal to VX times our expression for T, which is two V naught Y over G. And we don't have to do the sine cosine thing, right? Remember the range equation? Well, range is equal to V naught squared sine two theta over G. Can I talk about that in here or the other classes? Don't worry about it. All right, so we'll go here and this is all information we got. Delta X is equal to what's VX? 25 meters per second. What is V naught Y? 11 meters per second. Here, let's, we'll just say V, uh, two VX V naught Y, it's easier this way. Two VX, V naught Y over G. Now we'll plug this stuff in. Delta X is equal to two times VX, 25 meters per second, times V naught Y, 11 meters per second, divided by 9.8 meters per second squared. Dimensionally, what are we gonna get? Meters squared per second squared over meters per second squared. Gets rid of that, gets rid of that gets that rid of that got meters that's what we want all right so 25 250 plus 25 265 530 divided by 10 50 i don't know 55 meters 56.1 meters we could say 56 in terms of sig figs but that's where the answer comes from it's easier than a typical problem because we don't have to break down the components, right? We're already given them. All right, everybody okay with that one? Yeah. All right, that's number 35. No, 34. 24. 34. 34. 34.